Hey friends, I'm Lindy Bilson, and welcome to Redraw Your Path, a podcast where I share stories of people who have made big changes in their lives and forged their own unique paths. I talk with guests about their moments of messiness, fear, and reframing on their way to where they are now. My goal is to inspire you about the shape your life could take. So let's get inspired. Hello, friends. I have a lovely interview to share with you today. I had the chance to sit down with a dear friend, Caitlin Gray, and we talked all about her journey. We gushed a little bit about each other. We just couldn't help it. So apologies about that. But here's a little bit about Caitlin. Caitlin is a certified holistic health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. After her own 15-year journey with autoimmunity and acne, she experienced true healing as a result of letting go of outdated beliefs, patterns, and identities that no longer served her. Now, she is passionate about guiding other women as an embodiment coach in becoming embodied, reclaiming their authenticity, and reconnecting to their purpose. Caitlin also teaches yoga. She's a fantastic yoga teacher, and her Instagram shows all sorts of headstands she can do and will challenge you to do too. She teaches yoga. She is an avid salsa dancer and a lover of astrology and all things mystical. You are going to hear her authenticity and just genuineness and amazingness as a person come through. If you have those tissues nearby, definitely encourage you to have them and I'd love to hear what you think. Enjoy the interview. Hi, Caitlin. Welcome to Redraw Your Path. How are you today? Hi, Lynn. I am doing wonderfully. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. I'm so excited to have this conversation. I know we had it scheduled a few months ago. Actually, oh my gosh, almost a year ago, maybe, I think, before I was getting the podcast up and running. So I'm really excited to make it happen. I am too. Awesome. So let's start with giving listeners some context about where and how you grew up. Tell us about little Caitlin's life. Okay, so I grew up in Lakewood, Colorado, and I was very into hanging out with my friends. I was a gymnast, I was a figure skater. I loved being outside. I lived in a neighborhood where there weren't any fences and there was a lot of space and a big creek and we'd catch tadpoles and ride our bikes all around and chase one another up and down this big hill that we had. So it was a great childhood in many ways. And then, yeah, I ended up going to high school and then college. I went to school in Seattle. So I kind of took a departure from being in Denver, moved there. Yeah. And then was there for five years. Awesome. It sounds really idyllic in some ways. Would you say that's right? I think in up until like sixth grade, I think I had a really kind of carefree, empowered sense of self and had a lot of really wonderful friends. I think seventh grade through 10th grade were really challenging. And then I switched schools mm-hmm. and grade through 12th grade were a lot more positive. But seventh grade through 10th grade, I felt very abandoned by, you know, best friends that I'd had all through (laughs) elementary school and kind of started to experience, I think, little periods of depression and anxiety and then moving into a different school in 11th grade just really helped me to reconnect to myself. I felt very accepted. I went to a small Christian high school during those years and that was just really helpful to be a part of the community. And I was very involved in church during that time as well. Well, all, all through growing up, but especially probably like seventh through 12th grade, I was really involved mm. in youth group and found a lot of community there as well. But I think also just having been in gymnastics and figure skating very young, I started to kind of have a bit of a war against my body because there are a lot of expectations with body image and the mold that you are sort of expected to fit into. Mm. So in many ways, up until a certain point, I think it was very carefree. And then young, I also started, though, to deal with a lot of challenges that sort of set the stage for challenges I think I 
would continue to navigate mm -hmm. into my adult years. But yeah, in many ways, a very loving family and community and had a lot of wonderful experiences too. So awesome. It's yeah. interesting how some of those threads that we experience early on or those challenges just kind of show up again and follow us through our lives. So I'm excited to dive in more <laughs> with you there. I'm curious that so you talked about being in gymnastics and figure skating and just some of the pressures that exist there. What other like pressures or expectations did you feel like you had growing up? Yeah. So I was always a really good student. I was always, I think, very comfortable in asserting myself as somebody that was interested and curious. And I felt always that I was intelligent. So I was connected to that in a way where I think I almost took it for granted. It, it mm. sort of felt like those things sometimes that kind of come more naturally to you, maybe you either overemphasize them or undervalue them. And I think I found some identity in being a good student and studious and kind of really very much living according to the rules. But simultaneously, I think I put a lot of attention on my body and what was external mm. and how others were receiving me. As like a nine-year-old in gymnastics, my favorite coach one day, she had pulled me aside and I thought she was going to say something really loving. And instead she said, your stomach's really big and mm. you're fat and you need to stop eating essentially. No. And I had a six pack at the time, like I was this ball of muscle. And I think that was like a really defining moment too, because I started to over fixate on food and my body. And so, yeah, I think there were these expectations. It became much more about being perceived by others a certain way and being approved of. And I think that was also very connected to being in the church and trying to live up to certain standards for purity or goodness or trying to win the approval of God and others. So I think mm -hmm. that was like a big theme. And those were expectations that I think I tried to adhere to more so than others, because I think, like I said, I was a pretty good student that came naturally, but I really... I think over fixated on those other areas. It's interesting that that challenge of getting external validation versus being able to internally validate yourself and how does the world receive you? I mean, I'm 40 and I've been having a lot of reflections and discussions about that topic just this week. So it's just interesting and in looking back, knowing that when you were nine, someone that you trusted and loved and looked up to said something like that to you. And I think it's no wonder we grow up with a lot of challenges and looking for that external validation, especially when we are the more typical good students, we're looking for that outside approval, people pleaser type. Completely. Yeah, it is. It's wild. It's one comment or one moment can really set the stage for I guess, just defining your sense of self. Where I mean, obviously, it was compounded by other things and influenced by so many other things. But there can be these defining moments that really, I think, direct us along a path and inform our sense of self and inform what makes us worthy or not worthy of love and approval and affection and, you know, validation and all those things. So, yes, yeah, so I feel like that's been such an interesting part of my journey because as you know too then my body became a focal point due to autoimmune disease and I then struggled with acne for many years so it's just fascinating how you see these through lines yeah I think you, I'm so excited to share with listeners your journey because you've taken some of the challenges you faced and you've really made something beautiful out of it in helping others. So can you tell listeners where and how you're currently spending your days? Yes, I am currently a health and embodiment coach. So I work with clients around some of these themes that we're talking about. I worked with clients around chronic illness issues, around boundaries, around self-worth, around cultivating connection to their deep desires, to their wants and needs. 
And then I also am a yoga teacher. So I teach power vinyasa and I really love that. I feel a real sense of connection to myself through the practice of yoga. And that's something that I love, you know, really supporting others and my students in. I thrive doing handstands and all sorts of different inversions and things. So I'll put, yeah, on, you do. <laughs> I'll put on different handstand workshops. And I also, even with the coaching, will put on workshops around like cycle thinking, like how can women be more connected to their bodies through their own cycle and how that's connected even to the seasons and nature. And so I'm, I'm kind of my hands in a lot of different baskets, I suppose, but I'm feeling really grateful that I can do work that feels fulfilling to me and that I can use the things that I was highlighting a few moments ago, all the knowledge and everything that I've learned and gleaned from my own experience to support others now. I love that. I love yeah. that. And I will share with listeners too. I've worked with you on a few sessions. You've helped me and it's funny. I went into it. I was like, Caitlin's going to help me with my nutrition and she's going to help me come up with a meal plan. And I think we started with self-love and I was like, <laughs> oh, this is way harder, <laughs> like way deeper work. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be, and maybe that I was ready to do. <laughs> and it's so powerful, right? Because when you mm -hmm. uncover all those layers, that's when you can actually change the behaviors that you're making in your everyday life. Yes. So just a quick plug for your amazingness. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So you grew up in, in Denver. You had a pretty lovely childhood up until a certain point and then really struggled with friendships and body image. You said you went to college in Seattle. Can you talk us through, like in your journey, when was your first turn from the path that you had expected you would take or that others expected you would take? Yeah. So I would say I went to school at a Christian college in Seattle. So I was very steeped in sort of, yeah, the, the Christian world. And faith is still very important to me, although the way that I relate to faith has sort of shifted over the years. But during that time, I think I was very much entrenched in a world where the thinking was very black and white. It was very much you're good or you're bad, you're loved mm. or you're sinful, you're, you know, redeemed or a sinner, those types of things. And there was a big message too, I think, for women around being chosen by a good Christian godly man. Mm -hmm. And so truthfully, when I was in school and in that world, I didn't have really a clear sense of what I necessarily wanted for myself. Originally, actually, I was going to become a therapist. I was enrolled in all the psychology classes, and then I started having panic attacks. And there wasn't a lot of support around mental health at the time. So I was not helped, but rather told that there was something probably horribly wrong with me. No. Which, yeah, which actually diverted me from then fully pursuing that. So I decided to get a degree in communications and I loved music. I was really into singing and worship. So I thought, well, maybe I can become a worship leader and maybe I'll marry this amazing Christian man and we can just be worship leaders together. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. Was, I mean... <laughs> I can't think of a the sexier dream. fantasy. The dream, <laughs> you know? So I think that was like kind of my vision, honestly, for my life. And then I graduated and I had no idea what I was doing. The recession happened. Mm -hmm. So I ended up moving back to Denver and then nannying for years, which I think I just felt very stuck, you know, and almost kind of ashamed that I didn't have a clear vision for what I wanted. But because early on, I didn't learn how to have an internal locus of control. I was always looking externally. I think I had a hard time trusting myself. So I ended up getting um, certified to teach yoga. And once again, didn't have a strong sense of confidence or self. So I didn't end up pursuing that as fully as I could then then kind of worked in coffee shops and restaurants and did contract work for lawyers, worked in 
oil and gas and an administrative role, worked in other administrative roles. And then finally decided because I was dealing with chronic illness that was undiagnosed and then really just cystic acne that was chronic over the course of 10 years. I had done a lot of work to try to heal physically and learned a lot through that process. So I decided to finally go to get my certification to become a holistic health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And I would say that was like one of the first real places and points aside from doing some traveling, like solo traveling and different things where I really was deciding to choose what I wanted that was valuable for me after many years of vacillating back and forth and kind of deciding to go in a particular direction and then allowing fear to take hold and holding myself back, but feeling then very stuck Mm -hmm. and very, like I said, kind of consumed by sort of shame at being stuck and then, you know, allowing fear to dictate and not allow me to move forward. And not to say that I wasn't doing wonderful things during that time. I got really involved in salsa dancing, was very involved in yoga, have many friendships in the community. But in terms of career and purpose and feeling connected to that, I struggled for a long time until I decided to take that step. Yeah, it sounds like one of the first times where you really trusted yourself and took a path that was somewhat unknown. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's interesting. And I'm really excited to see this full circle as listeners will hear it unfold. You know, reflecting on your time in college and having that first thought of I'm going to be a therapist. And you experiencing the exact systemic challenge, which is the lack of mental health supports and resources, is Mm -hmm. what led you to not be a therapist. I think you know, timing is everything, right? And you'll share your current path with listeners, but it just makes me so sad for, you know, college age Caitlin that needed that support Mm -hmm. and needed to hear that your path is actually, the one you have laid out is actually really perfect because Mm -hmm. you're feeling what's going to be coming up in future patients and clients. Yeah. Thank you, friend. Yeah. I think that's, Something that I've reflected on also is just like, I've had to confront so many different obstacles and challenges. And I feel that's really equipped me to be able to support others because I understand what that's like to feel like you're coming up against a lot of roadblocks. Mm -hmm. And whether those are external to you or whether in a way they can be self-imposed or whether those things coalesce to kind of create (laughs) a roadblock, you know, regardless of what it is, I do feel that those things have been purposeful along my path to help to guide and direct me to where I am and where I'm headed. So that's Mm -hmm. really cool. I love that. Thank you for sharing. (laughs) As you were going through the period where you were nannying, which is such a beautiful profession, by the way, as an early childhood advocate, I find it so important. As you were going through that period and restaurants and working in admin roles, was there any reframing you were going through during that time and as you chose to go into your integrative nutrition program? Yeah, I I remember being in all of these different roles and I would always daydream about traveling, like moving abroad. (laughs) I wanted to escape my reality. And I would sort of fantasize about the future that I wanted. But instead of taking action towards those things, I'd say, well, I don't have the money, or I don't have the clarity, or I need to be more established. You know, there was always sort of something that stood in the way of me actualizing the things that I really wanted. And so I had to reckon with that at some point to understand what was at the root of not being able to fully claim and take hold of what I claimed to want, but that I was too afraid to move towards. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I mean, I did take hold of some of those things and did pursue those opportunities, you know, like a two month solo travel trip through Europe, those types of things. But I also just recognized that I was looking for quick fixes to this feeling in myself that I wasn't actualizing and realizing my potential and what was in me. Mm -hmm. And so that was 
obviously over the course of many years that I was reconciling and reckoning with those different things. And I put a lot of my focus and attention on trying to perfect myself in a way, like trying to heal the acne, trying to heal from autoimmune. So those things acted, I think, as a distraction. Mm. Also, it was like, when I achieve this, then I can have the life that I want. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of different narratives that were going on that were conflicting, and that were also keeping me in that same cycle and pattern. But eventually, you start to get older and recognize that like time is going to go by no matter what. And Mm -hmm. so you better decide to take hold of the things that are actually really valuable to you. And to really claim what is true about you and to stop trying to define yourself by other people's expectations and their narratives or whether or not they approve or disapprove because you have to live with yourself and your choices at the end of the day. And we're each here, I firmly believe, with a strong purpose and gifts that we're meant to share with the world. And a lot of times our challenges inform those gifts. But yeah, I think it's just been a long winding journey and path, but that was sort of the process. And it sounds like you had to take some steps back for yourself to look at the long-term picture rather than the short term and look at that work to really feel worthy inside. Exactly. So you did your nutrition, your IAN program and you became a health and wellness coach. Yeah. What was the next big turn you had in life? Yeah. So I, in 2020, started my own health coaching practice and was working with a lot of clients who had chronic illness issues, but also majorly traumatic past. And I started to, after hitting my own personal rock bottom during that period, and really having to move through a lot of grief and disappointment and releasing, I think, a lot of pain through my body in that process. And then working with clients who are also, I think, had experienced a lot of pain, realized that so much of our illness can be informed and these chronic conditions can be informed from a lot of pain that we're holding in our bodies from the past. And so as I was working with people and have been over the years, I started to recognize because I was initially saying, well, you know, I'm a health and wellness and embodiment coach, but then I started to feel really limited in terms of, well, I started to feel kind of, I guess, sort of like an imposter a little bit because I didn't feel fully equipped. I felt equipped through my own experience, but in terms of having credentials and being trained to actually support people in a deeper way to get to the root of their issues, I began to feel that I needed more of a skill set. And so then that really led me to grapple with, should I go back to school to get a master's in marriage and family therapy? But I once again was confronted with fear of the money, the going into more student debt, and then the time that it would take because I'm now 38. And of course, had a lot of judgments about what that might look like. But During that time, I also started to teach yoga at the studio called Yoga Box that I absolutely love. And through that, along with being a coach, I began to build up more confidence and I think to strengthen my voice. And through that process as well was realizing, okay, I think going back to school is the right move. And so now in August, I'll be starting a marriage and family therapy master's program. So I'm very excited. (laughs) I love that. I love that. And it sounds like teaching yoga specifically, because I know you practiced for many years before you started teaching regularly. Can you talk about how yoga specifically was a catalyst or a healer for you and secretly hopefully it'll motivate me to go to a yoga (laughs) class now that I'm in my new location because I miss it so much but can you talk about the power that it is as a tool or that it has been for you yes I went to my first yoga class in Seattle so I was 20 I think and it just really I'd always wanted to be a dancer growing up I was 
gymnast figure skater. And then I was like, I wish I'd been a ballerina, but I wasn't. So anyway, yoga though, vinyasa specifically, it's breath to movement. So you get into a flow in this kind of state of flow. And I really loved that. I loved the movement and how connected I felt and how it felt like a dance really. And through that process and practice, and learning what yoga was, the term yoga means union. And it's a union of your breath and your body and your spirit. And I started to really connect to my body in a different way, because I'd always felt that my body was something to be manipulated in order to fulfill what I wanted it to fulfill, mm -hmm. or to look as I wanted it to look, rather than recognizing what a miracle the body is and that it houses our spirit. And through connecting to our breath, we get to tap into those deeper layers of ourselves and to know ourselves and to observe ourselves and to observe our reactions, to observe our thoughts, our beliefs, our patterns. So yoga really opened me up into this new world of understanding and relating to myself and to my body. And then I, having a gymnastics background was like, oh, I really want to be able to do all the cool handstands and tricks and stuff. So yoga became also a portal into a way for me to let go of perfectionism and embrace the process of learning and growing and mastering skills that in the past I was so outcome oriented that I would have given up easily if I didn't get something right away. But yoga really allowed me to see that through the process, that's where life is and fullness is, you know, and through the practice, there's a famous quote called practice and all is coming. So the more we practice, the more we show up to the moment to the experience to our bodies to ourselves fully, and inhabit that space, the more awake to life to ourselves, we become. So I think yoga really has allowed me to accept myself more fully to appreciate what my body can do to move into a space of like of gratitude and to also help me to realize that the breath is something that as much as we may be holding tension or stress or these patterns that we create in our bodies to protect ourselves we can use our breath to bring softness to bring love compassion awareness to those parts of ourselves too that might need to let go and release so it's honestly, it's provided just an endless number of, of benefits and gifts, really. That's really beautiful. And it's interesting thinking back to when we first started and talking about your context of how you grew up and yeah. you mentioned the war on your body started around age nine and going into adolescence. And it sounds like yoga has been a tool to really transform that from a war to a peacemaking journey with yourself and a journey or an opportunity to embrace imperfection and to embrace love for yourself. 100%. Yeah. Very grateful, honestly, because I don't relate to that way of seeing or being anymore the way that I used to relate to myself. It's wonderful to see how you really can overcome and how, yeah, like yoga has been such a gift to me in that way. Mm -hmm. Move me from one way of seeing into an entirely different mode of seeing and way of being in the world. So that's been really cool. Well, and it's very cool hearing your path because you've added all of these skill sets over time that are so complementary to each other. And you've helped your clients and you will help future clients as well by understanding more the root cause of a lot of issues that come up, right? And thinking back to college, Caitlin, and those panic attacks that were coming up, at that time, you believed there was something horribly wrong with you, which is, you know, yes, there is a signal that there is something going on, but it's how we internalize what we believe. And you're going to be helping your clients really be able to uncover root cause issues and live beautiful lives. I mean, I know you're doing that already, but it, I'm so excited for you. Thank you. It's pretty cool because, yeah, I think one of the messages I internalized from the church was like, your body 
is inherently sort of sinful, like your desires aren't godly almost. And so you need to disconnect. And I think what's been beautiful about my journey is that as I've come into deeper relationship to myself and to my own body, like that's informed a more beautiful, holistic connection to God, to to myself, but to like all things, to nature, to the planet, to just seeing the interconnectedness of everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what I want to help others connect to as well is that, okay, maybe I have a symptom, but that symptom is often rooted in something, right? And for me, I developed Hashimoto's, which is it's a autoimmune thyroid disease and the thyroid is in the throat. And for me, it's, it's just interesting to see I had such a hard time expressing and claiming my deep desires and what I wanted and speaking those things or feeling worthy of receiving. And that really aligns with that area of the body, the throat chakra and being mm-hmm. able to really take up space in the world and meet the world with your voice and then and to be heard and seen and all those things. So even as you begin to make those connections, you see how there really is inherent perfection in our bodies and our experience and the way that life is reflecting back to us what we need to, to heal. And so that's been really gratifying to be able to kind of begin to understand and recognize and help others to be as well. Yeah, yeah. And that lens, it's interesting that I think you said inherent perfection in our bodies. And it's interesting how I might approach something coming up for myself when I understand that there's inherent perfection rather than like, this is an imperfection and something to be fixed in my life. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like your body is mirroring to you what is out of balance rather Mm -hmm. than my body is attacking me or my body is betraying me it's like no my body is actually my advocate and my body is informing me of what needs to be brought back into balance whether that's emotionally spiritually mentally physically girl I'm gonna clip that little piece of audio and listen to it every single day because as someone who deals with chronic pain that is such a great mantra and reminder to be keeping in mind, right? Caitlin, are there any other turns you would like to share or talk about in terms of your journey? I would say, I guess I'm just really excited for what's to come. And it's nice to be at a place finally where I recognize that the journey is not always going to be easy, but that's not the point. And I think Mm. in the past, I thought if I could perfect myself, then I could be given what it was that I wanted and that it wouldn't have challenges that would come or that it would just be easy because that would somehow be a reflection of my goodness. (laughs) But like, that's such a faulty narrative. And so I think I'm just really excited to finally have embraced the truth that just as in yoga, it's like showing up and being present to our bodies, to the sensations, even if those are uncomfortable. Mm. That's such a metaphor for our lives, even though we may show up to something that we want and we're working towards a goal that doesn't mean it's not going to be without challenge or discomfort, but that those challenges, that discomfort may be the very medicine that we need and the things that will inform and shape us to be able to fulfill that purpose that I was speaking about or to come to know ourselves in a deeper, more true way so that we can live aligned, meaningful lives. So I think I'm excited just feeling like I've accepted that to move forward into the future and hopefully help others to become more embodied and more connected to themselves and to their inherent worth. I love that. And I, I think it's interesting going back to 18 or so years ago, your plan was to become a marriage and family counselor. And I think about had you gone on that path, awesome, great, like you would have been helping people this entire time, I'm sure. But now you have all of this life experience and all of this knowledge and all of the beauty of the last 18 years, even with the challenges to add to that. And I just I Gosh, I'm like so excited for you. I have like chills. This is great. Thank you, friend. Well, I thank you for always encouraging me 
along my path and being such an instrumental part of my journey to your friend. So thank you. That's what I'm here for. I know you've given so much good advice and I'm just like <laughs> hearing gems drop in the background. Aww. Is there any other advice you would like to share with yes. others who might be considering redrawing their path? Yes. I think I would say you are worthy of a deeply fulfilled and fulfilling life. And that if there's something in your heart that you deeply desire that it's worth pursuing and connecting to, even if you don't see the path, that just putting one foot in front of the other in the direction that you want to head, doors will open up for you, that things will become possible, that you didn't anticipate that people will come alongside you and support you on the path that you are so courageously walking and that it's Mm -hmm. worth taking that journey because from my own experience, life will continue to present you with opportunities to pivot towards what you're meant for. And it's uncomfortable to be faced (laughs) with those opportunities over and over. So as much as you can, being willing to even in the face of fear, trust that you're being guided and directed for a purpose towards mm. what you're meant for. Mm. Yes, that's my greatest advice at this time. I love that. <laughs> it's pretty great advice, in my oh, opinion. Good. Thank you for sharing that. Caitlin, where can people find you? And is there anything you would want to promote or share with listeners? People can find me um, on my website if you wanted to book a coaching session, www.embodiedholistichealth.com. Also Instagram, which is also embodiedholistichealth.com. And then I'm on Substack. I've been writing over on Substack. It's caitlingray.substack.com. So yeah, you can find me in those places. Awesome. And I'll include all those links in the show notes. And I will plug Caitlin's Substack. I read every single newsletter that comes out and I'm like constantly replying because it's usually resonating with me. So thank you for putting your gifts out into the world. And if listeners don't know by now, spoiler alert, Caitlin and I are friends in real life. (laughs) So I just want to thank you for your friendship. It's been just really beautiful for me. And I have so many more words, but I'll keep them for off the mic. But (laughs) thanks, Caitlin. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and joining Redraw Your Path today. Oh, thank you, Lynn. It's been such a joy and I'm so grateful and I appreciate you so, so, so much. Thanks for listening to Redraw Your Path with me, Lynn DeBilson. If you liked the episode, please rate and review. That helps more listeners find me. And don't be shy. Reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn and sign up for my e-newsletter at redrawyourpath.com. I can't wait to share more inspiring stories with you. See you next week.